Hi everyone, welcome back to Faith in Flower. This is Robin and welcome to a relaxing rainy day of homemaking. It's been a while since I indulged in some craft projects that I love like candle making. So I'm going to enjoy doing that today along with taking care of my house plants. I've got some repotting that I've been meaning to do for a while and then I'm going to spend a little time baking which I always love and so does my family. So I hope you'll join me today for some homemaking inspiration. I have always loved scented candles and now I love making them myself at home. It really couldn't be easier. You just combine an ounce of soy wax, a tablespoon of beeswax, and a half a tablespoon of coconut oil. Melt those in a double boiler or you can do it in the microwave and then add your favorite essential oils. For this candle, I am using a blend that I created from the essential oils that came in my monthly recipe box from Simply Earth. I want to thank Simply Earth for sponsoring today's video. I love this company. I have been working with them and using their essential oils exclusively for well over two years. Oils can be ordered individually at Simply Earth or you can try their subscription service, also called their recipe box. Simply Earth not only sells their oils at honest prices, but they also want to teach you how to use them. Each month you'll receive four oils and several recipes that are fun and easy to make. These recipes will help you gain confidence and clarity on how to use essential oils and you'll receive the extras that you'll need to make the recipes. Recipe boxes are only $39 a month and you can cancel at any time. And if you use my link in the description box and the code Faith and Flower Free, you'll receive a $40 gift card that you can use towards future purchases when you start your subscription. You'll also receive this big bonus box. And while you have your subscription, you'll continue to receive one every six months so that you have all of the supplies that you need to continue making all of the fun recipes that arrive each month. Since I have discovered Simply Earth, I have learned so many practical and fun ways to use essential oils. I love that they offer 100% pure essential oils at a third the cost of major brands and that they devote 13% of their profits to ending human trafficking. I made a master blend of this Autumn Days Diffuser Blend recipe to add to my candle. It smells so good and definitely captures that cozy feel that we're looking for in the fall. The fall is quite a long ways away from us here in Texas, but it's nice to start creating that mood in our home even though the weather isn't reflecting it outside. After combining all of the oils in the recipe, I can label my bottle with the stickers that are included in my recipe box. This way I'll have this blend ready to go to use in my diffuser or to add to candles or however else I'd like to use it. It's one that I know I'm going to really enjoy this fall. Once the essential oils have been added and mixed in, I just dip the bottom of the wick in the hot wax and so that it can adhere to the bottom of my jar. And I find that these small ball jars, I have them in my Amazon store if you can't find them in your local store, are great for a little votive candle. It's the perfect size and I love that I can put the lid on it and store it like that or if I'm making them to give as gifts that this jar can be reused which is really nice. Making candles is such a fun activity and it's one that older kids can get involved in as well. I think that this is a gift that anyone would love to receive at Christmas time or to take as a hostess gift during the fall season. These smell amazing, they burn really nicely, and I think I'm gonna make a lot more really soon.
remember my piece lily it's doing so much better in its new pot it's got more room to grow and i really love these pots that i put it in that are self-watering there's a wick that sits in the water and draws up the water into the plant so i just have to refill it when i see that the water is getting low and it gets just the right amount of water so i have two more of those pots and i want to repot a couple of other plants that i think would work really well in here so i'm going to do that today too the other plants that I have are either succulents or orchids and I don't think those would work really well in those pots because they take very little water but for the rest of my house plants I think this is a great solution because I don't have to worry that the plants are being over or underwatered, and if we were to leave town for a week or two they will be fine I bought these on Amazon so I added them to my Amazon store and you can find the link for that down in the description box I'm also using a good quality potting soil for indoor house plants, and it's got some fertilizer mixed in, so this will feed my plants too and give them the best possible start in their new home. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a max fill line on this portion of the pot, so you'll know exactly how high you can fill the water. And then as the plant draws the water up, you'll know when you need to replenish it. While I have the potting soil out and now a free pot, I'm going to give this cutting a new home. This is from my Calancho, I think that's how you say it. It's a plant that was given to me by my friends for my birthday a few years back. It has really pretty blooms on it in the spring and I've had it in this vase, letting it root, and now I think it's time to move it to a pot. Several months back, I divided my aloe plant into about four or five different pots. I gave some of them away and I kept two for myself, but one of them was in a pot that I wasn't particularly fond of, so I moved it into another pot while I was at it today too.
now for some baking. I need to mix up some of my gluten-free flour blend before I get started, and the recipe that I use comes from the Gluten-Free Baking Classics Cookbook by Annalise Roberts. It's really simple. I like to weigh out the ingredients, and then I use this in just about any recipe that calls for a gluten-free flour blend. Using a kitchen scale for this really speeds up the process and makes it so easy. So I can set any container that I like on top of my scale. I zero it out and set it on the gram setting. And then I measure out 600 grams of brown rice flour. I like to get one that is extra finely ground. 200 grams of potato starch, not potato flour, and 100 grams of tapioca flour. Then I just close the jar and give it a good shake and it's ready to go. Today I'm making banana bread and I'm using a different recipe. So I've shared a recipe that we use a lot here at home in previous videos, but I wanted to try something new and I found one called One Bowl Gluten-Free Banana Bread and it's by The Minimalist Baker. And I have one of her cookbooks, which I really love and I've tried a lot of her recipes, always with great success. Plus this recipe calls for three extra ripe bananas, which is exactly what I have. So I think it's the perfect recipe to try out today. Today. I will include the link to the recipe in the description box so you can try it out too. a cozy day to be inside with the sound of the rain on the roof, the smell from making candles earlier and the essential oils, plus the banana bread baking in the oven. It smells heavenly in here and even though it's not exactly fall weather on the outside, it's starting to feel like it here on the inside. 
I wanted to let you know today that I'm going to be taking a short break from YouTube, just taking off a little time to spend with family and recharge a bit. So I'm going to be back with all new videos very soon. So if you wonder where I've gone, I haven't gone for long, I'll be back. In the meantime, I'll try to keep posting on Instagram, so if you're following me, you can keep up with me there, and if you're not, head over to Instagram and follow me at Robin underscore Faith and Flower. I hope today's video inspired you to indulge in some fun projects at home. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give me a thumbs up and don't leave without subscribing. Also, share with a friend that you think might enjoy it. That really helps me out. I appreciate you spending your time with me here today. I look forward to seeing you in the comments and the next video. Until then, have a wonderful week.